doesn't work. <laughs> Newsflash, doesn't work. A lesson that I will tell my daughters every day, every single day. And unfortunately, I fell into that lie all really all throughout my undergraduate years. That is when my entire life just changed. Hello, my amazing, awesome friends. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I am sitting on my bed and I'm looking out at the gorgeous foliage. It is literally prime foliage right now. In the spirit of that, I made a pumpkin spice smoothie. Yes, welcome to my cozy corner of the internet where we drink smoothies in wine glasses because, in my opinion, they deserve such treatment. This is heaven on earth right here. My birthday is in a couple days, but this video is going to go up the day after my birthday. So I'm approaching my 25th birthday as I film this. I really wanted to take some time to just reflect on the key life lessons that I've learned since I've been alive. So I'm hoping to treat this video like a heart to heart, like we're just sisters chatting. These are the kinds of things that I'm not only going to be taking with me into the future, just life lessons to apply to my future, but these are also the kinds of lessons that I would tell a friend and that I would also want to tell my future daughter down the road. Lesson number one, no time spent with Jesus is ever, 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 ever wasted. Even if I'm in a really busy, hectic time of life, actually more so if I am in a busy and hectic time of life. Spending time with him is always rewarded with peace, with a sense of calm. He sees your efforts. Even in the midst of the craziness, you are choosing to acknowledge him and lay your burdens down at his feet. It literally never fails, you guys. Lesson number two, standing up for your values is always worth it. Even if it comes with unpleasant emotions, which honestly, nine out of 10 times it does. Jesus tells us that as Christians, we are going to have people who disagree, who maybe make life a little bit difficult. We're going to be persecuted against in many instances for our values and for our beliefs. But if there's one thing I've learned, it's that in those moments when you need to take a stance, you need to act on a particular option and it is a matter of your values and beliefs. Always going with what you believe is just always the best way to go, you guys, even if it's uncomfortable. And I cannot explain to you the amount of regrets, the amount of sleepless nights that come with choosing to go against your values. It's not worth it at all. This life does not last forever. And everything that we do and say on this earth is going to be essentially weighed and measured when we get to eternal life. Really, it's all the more reason to continue fighting the good fights, standing up for what you believe because it will be rewarded in heaven. Lesson number three, every moment spent caring about what someone else thinks of you is a wasted moment. The only opinion ever, ever worth caring about is God's opinion. He's our eternal judge. We're going to feel judged a lot in this lifetime, but really the only opinion we should care about is God's opinion. We might think that the world wants us to look a certain way. God loves you just as you are. He's not going to look at you with makeup on and say, wow, you're so beautiful today. And then when you're not wearing makeup, he's not going to think, oh, once you kind of get yourself together a little more, then I'll give you some more attention. It's not how he works. This doesn't just apply to how we look, but it applies to everything else, right? We spend so much time caring about what other people are thinking about us, the way that we respond to questions in class, the car that we drive, or our values, right? Or what we share online. As long as I'm thinking only of what God is going to think of what I'm doing and saying, that's all that matters. Everything else, again, is fleeting. This next lesson is for the college ladies, and maybe even the high school ladies are younger, but this is one of the biggest life lessons I ever learned, and it absolutely changed my life completely. And it took a long time to learn this. Yeah, don't think I learned any of these things overnight, you guys. I certainly did not. <laughs> this lesson is really, really important. Your worth and your value are not defined by how many boys give you attention, how many parties you get invited to, how much skin you show, all of that. Again, that is the world's trying to tell us that if all these things aren't happening, we must not be a worthy woman. We must not be very beautiful. We must not be the kind of woman that a man's going to want. We must not be valuable. And that is the biggest lie of ever. And unfortunately, I fell into that lie all really all throughout my 
undergraduate years of believing that my worth was coming from how I acted on the weekends. To be frank with you guys, I don't know why they use frank, but to be Bob with you guys. Uh, sorry, oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> I just feel so passionate about this. Your worth and your value comes from the fact that you are unrepeatable. You are made in the image of God. You're not only made in the image of God, but God made you. And God didn't make you for no reason. He made you because he loves you so much that he wants to spend eternity with you. Yes, he wants to spend eternity with everybody else, but he wants a specific bond and relationship with you specifically. You. That is unbelievable. <laughs> he knows the hairs on your head. He loves you that much. He cares about you that much. That is where your worth, your value comes from. Falling into the trap of trying to get guys' attention, partying on the weekends, and all these kinds of things, it is going to erode our sense of value and worth because God has called us to so much more in this life than what the world tells us is going to make us feel good about ourselves. The fifth lesson I've learned, always consult God before anybody or anything else. Specifically, always consult God before seeking random advice. He knows you, he knows me better than anybody else ever, ever, ever. And I know that we all can have, you know, friends, mentors, spiritual directors, therapists, etc., priests, friends, whatever, who we feel very, very close to and who we do feel know us extremely well, maybe even better than we know ourselves. And so in these cases, it's important to eventually consult these key people in our life on important matters. Even then, you guys, I think before then, something I've learned so much is to really go to God first. Learn to listen and understand how he speaks to you specifically. And then after you feel that you're maybe getting some sense of what he's conveying to you, or maybe if you're feeling particularly confused going to those people who you really really trust know you and care about your eternal soul I was that girl I'd say for many months if not a year or more where I was kind of obsessive with going on YouTube and trying to find advice trying to seek answers about so many things and I would go to YouTube first and of course what happens when you go online you essentially are just waiting to get the answer that you want and that was happening to me so I was like okay I didn't quite like their response so let me go ahead and watch this next video it was just causing more confusion and really ultimately I knew in my gut which I will get to that's a whole nother point in my gut listening to the Holy Spirit that is when the real answer was really found the sixth lesson that I learned just go on the dates yes just go on the date <laughs> <laughs> no, don't go on the date, of course, if you feel that your life is threatened. Maybe they're like 40 years older than you and you're like, no, this just isn't going to happen. There are caveats. I think you guys know what I'm saying. Just go on the date. You learn so much more about what you want and you learn so much more about what God wants for you. You also learn how to date. And I think that's really important, especially if you are in a position where you're feeling ready to get married soon. Dating intentionally is so important. It's such good practice to start going on first dates with people just starting to see you know how you get along with different personalities and well this is another point I keep spoiling points but the more that we do things that are uncomfortable the easier that they get so guys just go on the date you never ever know what fruit God is going to pour out into your life by going on a date with a person who maybe at first glance you'd say oh not really my type types no, 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 no. We'll, we'll just throw that out the window. Give them a chance. A lot of people may be giving you a chance as well because at first glance, maybe you're not their type. Just go on the date. I'm so glad that I took this advice a couple times because it led to a lot of fruit, even if not a relationship, some really, really incredible friendships. The seventh lesson that I've learned, the more that you do things that you're afraid of, the easier that they become. This is a principle that I carry into my clinical practice. I'm a mental health counselor. This is just foundational when it comes to specifically anxiety, right? Fear. You have to confront your fears, right? To get through them when you realize that things aren't as scary as you thought they were they become easier and you become less anxious and less fearful this applies to all things going on first dates driving on the highway publicly speaking in front of other people the more that we do things that are super uncomfortable the easier they're going to become the eighth lesson that I've learned what is for you might often be very very difficult but it is always going to lack confusion God is not a God of confusion 
the evil one is of confusion. God is not. God is of clarity. I do find that oftentimes there are things in life that feel really challenging. And I think to myself, maybe because it's challenging, this isn't what God wants me to do. That is oftentimes the easy way out and it is not what God wants for me. Actually, usually, if something is a little bit more challenging, it is what God is calling me to do because I grow from it, I learn from it. And on the other side of it, there tends to be so much fruit, whether it's a new relationship, a new job, growth spiritually, growth physically, mentally, and so on. The ninth lesson that I've learned, selflessness is the key to self-fulfillment. Life is just 10 times better when you're thinking about yourself 10 times less. <laughs> it goes against what society tells us. Society tells us that the more that we listen to our selfish impulses and then follow them, that's going to lead to a happy life. In college, I kind of tried that out <laughs> and it doesn't work. <laughs> Newsflash, doesn't work. I'm definitely not perfect at this, just like with all these things. These are lessons that I have learned, but I continue to grow in. The more that we're thinking of ourselves, the less peace we're going to experience because we were created to love God, to love the people around us, and we were created to serve the people around us. Jesus tells us really to put ourselves last. And so it makes perfect sense why this is a lesson that we're probably all going to come to learn at some point. Even though the world tells us that thinking about ourselves leads to happiness, it is the exact opposite. The less we think about ourselves, the happier that we become. Who'd have thought? <laughs> Jesus would have thought. The 10th lesson that I've learned, any moment spent worrying or focusing on the negative is a moment wasted. One of the phrases said most often in the Bible is do not fear, be fearful for nothing. And this has proven true for me, literally you guys, without end in my life, every single time, I have journaled about something I'm worried about or been anxious about. Always down the road in hindsight, I can see how there was never a need to be worried. God was always with me, helping me. My guardian angel was always by my side, helping me. There was never, ever, ever a reason to worry. Sometimes there is a need to be a little more alert in order to take action in our lives. But when it gets to the point of worry and fear, that's the issue, guys. That's where we don't want to fall into because the Lord tells us we don't need to do that. Now, the 11th life lesson I've learned, listen to your feminine intuition. <laughs> this just, I have no words for this one. It's amazing how it is so spot on. 99.9% .9 of the time, particularly if you are also in tune with the Holy Spirit, because I am convinced that the feminine intuition that kind of gut feeling that we get when we are in tune with the Lord already, that that is the Holy Spirit actually giving us that gut feeling. Cannot tell you guys again how many times I've journaled before about things I had hunches about, you know, like gut feeling. I kind of waited out a couple days, even a couple weeks, and then lo and behold, the gut feeling that I had is true and accurate and turned out to be correct. Listen to your gut because it's basically always right. <laughs> the 12th life lesson I've learned, embracing rejection will change your life completely. Completely. Literally in all aspects of life. The less that you fear hearing no, bruised ego that might come with it, the closer you get to the yes that is actually meant for you. This applies to things like jobs, dating, your prayers. We will be so much more courageous in saying yes to going on first dates and interviewing for multiple jobs, praying for the miraculous, right? Praying for things that we didn't think we could pray for. We will become so much more courageous in doing that when we realize that rejection is not a bad thing. Rejection is actually God pointing you towards what you're supposed to have, what's supposed to happen in your life, because he knows all. He wants to hear what you want, right? But he's gonna point you where you need to be. But he won't be able to point you where you need to be if you're not trying and taking leaps of courage. Don't be afraid of rejection. I know this is especially hard when it comes to dating. We all just want to be loved. And first and foremost, we are loved crazily by the Lord. That's the first point. He literally thirsts after your soul and your heart and he thinks you're so beautiful. So let's just get that out of the side because that is so important to start with. We are all seeking love and we get loved 
from him first and we love him first and then from there we can be pretty fragile potentially when it comes to human relationships we want to get married we have all these circumstances where we can get our little hearts broken by humans always remember that god loves you first and he knows what's best for you and so there will be heartbreak in your dating life potentially unless god wills for you that you marry the first person you date which that's incredible and praise God if that happens. For most of us, we are going to experience heartbreak, but we need to go through the heartbreak to get to what it is that God actually desires for you, which is gonna be so beautiful. So do not be afraid of heartbreak. Yes, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but the more that you experience and go through things that you're afraid of, the easier it's gonna become. The 13th life lesson I've learned, Jesus Christ is the only true source of peace and joy and contentedness in this life. We will find misrepresentations all around us all of the time, but he is the only unfailing source. We seek that peace, contentedness, and hope by watching television, right? By distracting ourselves, eating our feelings away, going on vacations all the time. And we tell ourselves these things are going to be what satisfies everything for us, when in reality, you guys, it's your relationship with Jesus that's going to do that. The 14th life lesson I've learned, learning to control what you can and accept what you cannot is one of the ultimate keys to joy in this life. There are gonna be a lot of things in life where we do have the ability to make some change and actually control the way that things go, but then there are gonna be times when no matter how hard we try, God has other plans. So if we can just accept our circumstances for what they are and know that God is doing something with them and that he is gonna turn that into something beautiful, then that is just gonna bring so much more peace in your life. The 15th life lesson I've learned, consistency and persistence are what set apart those who achieve their goals and those who do not achieve their goals. Again, this just applies to literally all things and it's really all about discipline, honestly. And this is something I had to learn I did not have a lot of discipline really throughout most of my life until like the end of college, if that, honestly. If you wanna grow closer to God, you need to be consistent and persistent in prayer, in the sacraments, even when you're tired, even when you don't feel up to it, even when you're trying to convince yourself of all of the millions of other things that you think you should be doing instead. The same principle applies to if you want to learn a new skill, get more physically fit. Even on the hard days, if you just keep going, that is what is going to lead you to actually achieving what it is that you want. The 16th life lesson that I've learned, literally everything around you is shaping you for better or for worse. And I mean this literally. I also had to learn this the hard way. I really was kind of convinced for a while that it didn't really matter what I listened to, where I hung out. And it wasn't until COVID when I came home from college for a large chunk of time and was able to see who I was away from some of that stuff that I started to realize, oh my goodness, this is having such a huge impact on me and who I'm becoming. And I don't like who I'm becoming by being around these things. If you think about like the shows that you're watching, the music that you're listening to, even if it's just on in the background, the people that you're spending time with, the physical locations you're spending a lot of time in. Are you hanging out in parks? Are you hanging out more in the bar and nightclub? kind of seen. The 17th lesson that I've learned, being confident is not a bad thing. <sighs> I could do a whole video on confidence. I have personally struggled a lot with understanding confidence as a Catholic, as a Christian in general, trying to figure out how do I strike a good balance between being confident and being humble. It is a lesson I have learned actually more recently that it is a good thing to be humble. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Let me try that again. It is a good thing to be humble, but it is also a good thing to be confident. It just depends on the intent behind your confidence and the way that you're using your confidence too. If you are acting confidently, but looking down upon others, that's not what we're going for. It's more about being confident in where God has you, being confident that you have worth and value because God has created you. It is that kind of confidence that is very, very helpful to actually pursue the goals and the will essentially of God for your life. And you can do that while being humble. 
because we can always recognize that the Lord knows so much better than we do and that he has great plans for us so beyond our understanding. The 18th life lesson that I've learned, an attitude of gratitude will completely change your life. If we lift our minds and hearts up to God constantly, we can't help but literally live in heaven on earth. Your entire outlook on life and every single situation will change when you start to practice expressing gratitude all of the time. Even if you're in a moment that's a little bit scary, you're a little bit frightened or fearful, if you just turn your hearts and minds to the Lord and you thank him for anything in your life, he is going to be able to bestow upon you that sense of peace. The 19th life lesson that I've learned, learning to use your voice and speak up in vulnerability and gentleness and conviction is one of the most important things that you can do. And this is a lesson that I will tell my daughters every day, every single day, because you are valuable you're worthy, you're beautiful, and you should have standards in all relationships, just like we do with God. When we are telling him vulnerably how we feel, how something made us feel, we need to be able to do this with people in our lives too, because this is when relationships actually grow. It will deepen your relationships and it will build your own sense of dignity and worth. The 20th life lesson I've learned, we will never regret how much we have loved. Love is how we will be measured in the end of this life. I know this can be a hard one. A lot of the times the world tells us that if somebody isn't being kind to you or isn't treating you nicely, you don't have to be friendly to them anymore. You don't have to be kind to them anymore. In fact, you can just walk away and like cancel them forever. But praise be to God for this, that he teaches us this. We will actually feel worse if we retract love, even from our worst enemies. In fact, we are called to love unceasingly to everybody around us. In fact, that's what Jesus did right on the cross when he was being scoffed at, mocked. He never yelled back at them. He didn't disregard them as less than or anything. In fact, he asked God to forgive them for they knew not what they were doing. It brings so much incredible peace when there are people in our lives who we don't agree with, who have maybe caused us pain. Rather, loving them, even if that means from afar, right? Praying for them brings the greatest amount of joy and we will never regret that. By the end of our life, the Lord is going to look back on whether or not we, you know, got revenge or continued to love. But there is a caveat here, ladies. Of course, we're not doormats. We are not going to stay in an abusive relationship. Absolutely not. That's why I say we can love from afar. There are times when we need to separate ourselves from people because they're actually harming us emotionally, physically, etc. And we do need to remove ourselves, but it's how we handle it internally when it comes to loving those people. That 21st thing that I have learned, your quirks and imperfections are the most beautiful things about you. I'm actually going to make a whole video specifically on this topic because I feel very, very passionate about this. We're not meant to be cookie cutters of each other. God made us each specifically unique and beautiful. Once I learned that I wasn't supposed to be like Jane down the road or Hillary in my class, once I learned that I was called to just be beautiful unique me that I didn't need to copycat somebody else to be valuable and beautiful etc that is when my entire life changed so I wish the same for you whatever quirks or things that you consider imperfections are making you feel less than turn that around and look at those things as what makes you unrepeatable and actually more beautiful the 22nd life lesson that I've learned a sense of humor is one of the most effective coping skills throughout this life <laughs> Some of the most joyful sufferers that I know are those people who know how to find and keep the funny all of the time. The people who are able to keep a sense of humor, not self-deprecating, but a sense of humor about just everything around them where they're able to acknowledge that, you know, the little silly bird on the tree is looking pretty funny and they're able to laugh about the bird. That is such a powerful coping skill. The 23rd life lesson that I've learned, it is not our circumstances that determine our quality of life, but it's how we perceive those circumstances. We can have all of the money, all of the things in this world and still feel like we don't have enough and still be yearning for more. The way that we think about what's happening around us really has more of an impact 
on our joy, on the way that we experience this life, than the circumstances and the events themselves. The 24th life lesson I've learned, you need to love yourself before you go out trying to love someone else. And I mean this specifically in the case of a romantic relationship. The first step to really a successful, healthy relationship is to get to know the girl looking back at you in the mirror. Get to know her first and get to love her first and appreciate her first and then you'll be able to appreciate and love the people in a romantic relationship. It's so important, you guys. The 25th life lesson that I've learned, God has you exactly where he needs you to be in this present moment. I definitely learned this the hard way. I was always living in the future, thinking about what's to come and, and really struggling to be present in the here and now. But ultimately, I learned to trust his timeline and trust his pace because in hindsight, you will see it all fit together. And that's exactly what happened to me and continues to happen to me is that I think that I know when things should be happening and ultimately his plan is so perfect and just trust and know that you can be present and enjoy this moment right here and right now because he's already taking care of you and your future. So friends, that is the end of this video. Let me know in the comments what life lessons have you learned? What are some of the biggest, most important words of wisdom that you have gained over the years? Let me know in the comments so that we can all learn from each other. And before I end this video, the votes are in. I put a poll up on YouTube about favorite fall flavors and I asked all of you guys, all of my subscribers, what your favorite fall flavor was, and I haven't checked in a while, so let me just take a peek. The winning flavor is pumpkin. Oh my gosh, it's too perfect because I made my pumpkin spice smoothie. Thank you so much for voting. Now you have inspired me to make more pumpkin spice smoothies, so thank you for that. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and I can't wait to share with you guys my 25th birthday vlog, and then also giving you some ideas about what you can do as a Christian, as a Catholic, to celebrate on your next birthday. So I will see you all in my next video. Have a lovely day. Bye, everybody. Cheers.